Yeah, uh, people don't like to be told they're bad at anything. Uh, and that's kind of the whole point of this conversation mm. is like, how do you tell someone that they're not doing well without immediately offending them and making them defensive? How can you position this so that you're like, hey, I'm your advocate. I'm trying to help you, not trying to belittle you or say that you're bad or kick you from the group or anything. I think that we have, th there's this notion within the community that if somebody says, hey, like, this is you're you're not doing enough damage that they're like immediately insulting your character and uh, you know it like gets personal for some reason but i i feel like that it shouldn't always be the case it's really about how you present the feedback stream three my god snub wants in all right okay i'm going in i am going in now let's go the goose is loose i'm in Yo. Why do you always assume something bad happened? <laughs> well, because, because look, look, okay, it's precedent, okay? It's precedent. Well, you know, I've been thinking a lot lately. Uh, th this is, I'm just, I'm, I'm going to just kind of like spitball it here and we'll, mm -hmm. we'll figure it out. But I've been thinking a lot lately about how, remember when Dragon's End was like first out and you and I and like maybe a bunch of other people were like, you can do it, right? Like we went full like Shia LaBeouf or whatever his name is. And we're like, just do it. You can do it. Like motivating people, saying that it's possible to do more damage. All I had to do is change your build a little bit. And, you know, like we were like really trying to encourage people. Lately, I've been seeing this shift and everyone is like, everyone's doing like the low intensity builds and stuff. Mm -hmm. And suddenly everyone's like, yeah, it's totally possible. <laughs> and, oh, like I can do so much damage now. I'm just like really perplexed by this. I find it really interesting because when we were saying things like, oh yeah, like you can do it. We just, you just got to like change your build a bit. And like, if you just press one and do this and we were getting like attacked for that saying we were toxic and whatever, and then an ableist. But now there seems to have been this entire shift right in the community. And everyone's like, yeah, low intensity builds. You can do it. It's totally possible. And I've been thinking, how did what I, how is what I said different than what people are saying now? Was it simply the terminology? Was it the way that I was saying it? Just thinking about how we as a community can do better at communicating, just communicating in general, but communicating when somebody needs to improve or like when there's a way that you can improve or helping people with a mechanic, right? I oftentimes see people in raids, they're like, LOL, why would you play that? Or like, or, or they'll just like demean somebody because they don't know a mechanic. How do we create this like mutual understanding and educate people on how to express themselves in a way that is productive on both sides, you know? Oh, it's just timing. The, the only reason it got weird uh, and the only reason people had a problem with it is because of um, the timing, in my opinion. Um, it was the perfect storm because it is, when we were talking about it, right? Um, it was people were frustrated, right? They were very, very frustrated. Now people aren't frustrated anymore because um, they don't, you, you know, you don't, you're not, they're not getting gate kept, right? There's no gatekeeping now. Now they're, they're free to improve and it doesn't matter if they do or not, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. Whereas, I mean, whereas maybe emotions were high because they couldn't get the turtle at the like yeah, right yeah, yeah. away and. Yeah, it, in my opinion, it was purely the environment where that conversation was existing was just ridiculously toxic. Um, but, and particularly, so it's really hard to do this because we were in the position of having something and we were talking, we were the haves and they were the have nots, right? And it's they true just, that, maybe a bit arrogant or something. And it's true that we were trying to help them become the haves, right? But it's still, it, it still doesn't feel good right okay you know like we're going oh yeah this is what you have to do this is how you do it right but in guild wars 2 that's never happened before that's never been necessary right like i think that um in some ways people were perceiving dragon's end as a paradigm shift whereas um all before this being good at the game has not been relevant and kind of having a good strategy hasn't been relevant and, and in a way we haven't been relevant right you know the the players who 
you know, help you how to play the game, right? And make bills and stuff. Not relevant. Even Snowcrow, so this is like the household name. Is Snowcrow's really relevant to most players? Honestly, no, no, they aren't. Um, and I think players were perhaps detecting a shift where, hang on a minute, these players are actually going to be relevant. They're going to be the ones dictating the game, right? Uh, they're going to be the ones dictating, in a way, the culture of the game because it's going to be baked into the way the content is designed. So I think there was a lot of threat being perceived by the broader player base, and we were representatives of that threat. If that makes any sense. Yeah, so we just got ran over, basically. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Damn. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, I think it's really interesting. Um, I had this conversation last night. I mean, I'll give you another scenario. So, obviously, people know that I, I make statics on NA. It's like what I do. We have, like, over 10 mm -hmm. statics in the guild, and we help, pe we help facilitate people getting into groups. Lots of fun. However, one problem that we've had is we try to get everyone to have the same expectation and they acknowledge that when they sign up that, hey, these are progression groups and this is what you're going to do. But you have to improve. Like you can't just stagnate and put in no effort. That's part of essentially like the charter. You have to have a growth mindset. Mm -hmm. Well, what I would do before if a group was having a problem is I'd go to them and be like, ah, you know, looks like your group. And in my head, I'm like, there's like two or three people, maybe looks like your group isn't really putting in all the effort they need to. And was just really wishy-washy or really soft about it, like really, really afraid to offend anybody, wouldn't tell anybody directly. I just would say, hey, you know, it looks like we have a problem here. Like, generally, this is what you can do to fix it. And I had like three statics disband because there would be just a handful of people that weren't putting in the effort. And so lately I've been very direct. Like I will say your damage is not good and this is how you fix it. And I just, I've been thinking like, am I swinging way too far the other way now? Am I being too rude, too direct? How do you help people how do you give people feedback without them immediately getting insulted? Because that seems to happen a lot, especially in raids. And people seem to be very, very defensive when you make a suggestion for how to do something better. Another example is I was in uh, Deimos the other day, and this person died to Mind Crush every time because they weren't going in the bubble. And so after we wiped to oil for the 12th time, I, I said, do you know the fight? Um, and they were like, no, well, then why didn't you say anything? You know, like, how do, how do we encourage people to just talk to just, and when there's an issue, um, accept the feedback and not get offended by it. Um, but also give feedback without being, you know, totally abrasive. You know, I, this is really hard to do and, and actually very expensive. But I think one of the most effective ways to get... And you do this in your stack as well, which I think is really good. And I think this is going to pay off for you. Um, well, well I'll work. we can explain some context on this, actually, when I, when I say what it is. You might even guess what I'm about to say, actually. I think the best way to encourage people to do this is to literally gamify it, right? Is you, you encourage people to compete with each other make it a friendly competition with everyone involved, right? So um, th this is actually where I think stuff like parsing is really fucking useful. Um, so, you know, in WoW, right? Like in WoW, they, they literally have a rating for playing the dungeons, right? That the Mythic Plus, they have a rating system for that. And I think that that is actually really, really good because it just turns the entire thing into like a mini game in and of itself. So I think stuff like people competing over top DPS is really good. Um, different statics completing uh, competing over over clear times, which is what you have set up um, in in your uh, setup there as well. I think stuff like that's really good. Just gamify the entire thing and make it competitive, right? And then I think players are going to automatically want to go like, oh, you know, we, I kind of want to win, right? I want to be, we want to be the best static. Um, I want to get the top DPS in my group, you know? And if you can incentivize it, this is where the expense comes in. I, I think like being able to pay people or have little actual paid competitions for it, I think works out really, really well um, in this situation. But um, yeah, like that's, that's the way that I think is the, is how you want to go about it. Yeah. Yeah, stuff like this. It, yeah, exactly. Stuff like um, what Nico's linking here, which is basically like uh, exactly what this is, right? It's like a rating of um, all the best players uh, in Guild Wars. 
Guild Wars 2 that submit logs to Guild Wars 2 Wingman. I think stuff like that is extremely effective. Um, and you might say only for the high level. Well, yes and no. I mean, it... Obviously, not everyone's going to be competing for the top spot, but oh, maybe you want to get to top 10%. Maybe you want to get to top 25%, right, even, or something like that. It's just, I think that type of progression, that type of competition, it's it's fun. I think it's fun to people. Like, gamifying things is very effective. It's why so many games do it, right? Like, there's, there's always this element of, in so many games, even in, like, mobile games, especially in mobile games, all of it is gamified, right? Like, as much as possible. Uh, and they do, the, you know, you do, they do this in... You know, you see this kind of thing in, in even some, like, education, right? And even in, in, uh, in the workplace, right? Like, things get gamified a lot because people like to do it. But, yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, it, does, it falls about if the, if the people in the static aren't competitive. Well, realistically, if the players aren't competitive, then they're... <sighs> this is a really harsh reality. Well, um, if wait, wait, wait. I, I got to say something about this. Oh, okay, I, I got to say something about this. Do it, do it, Th do it. This do is it. actually something that drives me kind of crazy. Okay, okay. If you are playing a game where there is a big goal or objective, that's competition. If you are in a static trying to kill a boss, it is inherently competitive. So when people say, oh, I'm not competitive or I don't like competition or whatever, well, you're literally engaging in the most difficult content in the game, which inherently makes this somewhat competitive. You, you have to have a little bit of competition in you to engage in something like this. Otherwise, um, unless your goal is to not kill the boss. If your goal is to clear the boss, then it is inherently competitive. If you don't care, then I would kind of question what your goal is. Like, if you just want to go in and see it, that's kind of different. But then why engage with a group? what i'm trying to get at like if you mm -hmm. look at the definition of competition it involves there being like a large difficult task to overcome right and sometimes i mean you can be somewhat competitive for yourself but i just think in this case it is competitive like P pvp is naturally a little bit competitive there's different levels of competition obviously but if you go into a raid with the idea that you want to clear a boss that's competition I think people are going to uh, kind of, you know, meme you about the, um, about the definition of competition. But I really see what you mean there, for sure, right? Like, you, you are, in a way, think of it as PvP, but it's against a boss, right? Like, you're trying to work together with other players to defeat an obstacle. In a way, you're competing with that objective, right? Like, you're trying to, can you beat the objective? There is a degree, it's, the, it's a similar mindset, right? It is a very similar mindset in that regard, right? And you do have to essentially do exactly that. You know, you have to be competitive against the boss. You need to be able to beat its mechanics, right? And do enough DPS and dodge its abilities, right? In order to actually, um, in order to beat it. If you don't do that, then you won't win. But there you go. Yeah, I, I think it's just, I think it's mostly just a cultural thing. Um, I think that this, what you're describing, the mindset, doesn't exist anywhere else in the game, right? It, it you know, everything is trivial, essentially, uh, in the game. It, it requires no input from the player. And it, in a way... I know this is maybe a little bit psychobabble, right, at this point, but I think that it's a bit of a, a slightly rude awakening. I think that a lot of... I think it's very easy to go through Guild Wars 2 and think that you're playing really well, right? Like, dude, I'm farming all these meta events. Like, everything's dying. Like, I never lose, right? I never lose. And you go through you the entire the game. <laughs> yeah, you're like a god, right? Like, dude, I'm farming these fractals. I'm farming all the Ice Brood Saga strike missions. And then you go and play and a you raid. you get a gold medal everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And you <laughs> always win. You're always gold medal, gold participation, right? Every single time. It's very easy to get that impression from the game. And then when you actually run into objective, the game is now telling you that you're bad, right? Essentially. It, you know, if, if you, you know, keep headbutting into this boss and it won't fall over, or if you can't get it, you know, you're... You've killed it with your static group and you can't get it consistent. You know, you, you keep having, you know, you keep wiping every week. You're wiping a little bit and you, you can't, can't quite get it down, right? Like you can't get the mechanics. The game is communicating you um, that you are bad, basically, right? If that makes any sense. Uh, and that's probably not a very nice experience, right? Yeah, uh, people don't like to be told they're bad at anything. Uh, and that's kind of the whole point of this conversation mm -hmm. is like, how do you tell someone that they're not doing well without immediately offending them and making them defensive? How can you position this so that you're like, hey, I'm your advocate. I'm trying to help you. 
not trying to belittle you or say that you're bad or kick you from the group or anything. I think that we have, there's this notion within the community that if somebody says, hey, like, this is, you're, you're not doing enough damage, that they're, like, immediately insulting your character and, uh, you know, it, like, gets personal for some reason. But I, I feel like that it shouldn't always be the case. It's really about how you present the feedback. Well, I, I think it kind of goes back to this... Um, I think it goes back to this concept of just the paradigm of the game, right? Like, for the vast majority of the game, stuff like having a good build and, you know, knowing how the game works. I mean, look, I, I love the dragons as an example, right? The dragons as an example to me is perfect because... Um, Look, did you remember people were openly saying that you shouldn't need to know how boons or squads work to clear the meta event? I think that to yeah, me is such I, an interesting... I find that, that so odd. Yeah, that, yeah that, that to me is a fascinating statement because that is that statement is held for the entirety of the game, right? Like, you don't need to understand anything about the game, not even the very, very basics to clear it. You don't need to understand it in any way to clear um, almost every piece of content in the game. And in a way, um, I think of a lot of players actually prefer it that way, and they, they actively want it that way. And to an extent, who are we to argue with that, right? I mean, I guess we can, yeah. right? But ultimately, if they like it, then hey, that's fair enough, right? It's It's not... I'm not going to take away from that. If that's what they enjoy, that's completely fine by me. Um, yeah, you can't belittle them for having fun. For mm -hmm. me, the issue is is uh, acknowledging my bias. I don't get it. Like, I don't get how that's fun. Because to me, when you're playing a game, you're you're somewhat engaging with it. And what what I feel, if everything just falls over and dies to me, then that's just and you like AFK all the meta events and stuff. I just don't, I don't quite understand because you're not really engaging with the game in any meaningful way. And all of the systems that are in place for combat, you're just ignoring them. So the, it's kind of, it kind of becomes like a, mm -hmm. like a Farmville game. You know, you just like put the farm down and come back and ate. <laughs> that, that's what it starts to feel like to me. I mean, obviously that's a little hyperbolic, but it's, it's very strange. And, and there's a huge argument where people are like, I don't want to have to engage with the game in any way i just want to like click a bunch of stuff and then like walk in and win but it, i i guess maybe i am an anomaly i believe that the winning doesn't mean anything unless there was some struggle to get there that struggle doesn't have to be like a thousand hours of grind to get there but if everything just falls over to you then it's really unsatisfying to me so i i guess i just have a really hard time empathizing with that that perspective yeah and it's true um you know I, I i'm not really into you know afk games but think about it what games are popular even if think about mmos right most mmos are glorified cookie clicker cookie clicker right that's that's actually true like most of them are like this like even if you look at a game like wow right most of the content in that game is completely trivial and it's just like mindless grind is what most of the content is in that game. And that's fine, by the way. Nothing wrong with that. Um, but that's the way it is. Yeah. To be honest, I think that... Um, so this, what, what's the solution to this problem? Like, what, how, do we, how do we do the snub dilemma? To be honest, the only thing you... Well, I think, one, you need to realize that it's, it's a very slow-to-fix issue. So... My, in my mind, this is a culture thing, right? Like, the culture of the game is just very, very opposed to anything that requires you to um, improve or understand the game. Like, it, broadly speaking. And Dragon's End demonstrates that, right? And, you know, fair enough, right? Uh, you know, that's just the way it is. Um, so the only thing you can do is you have to slowly change the culture. It will take years, right? You know, it's going to take us ages, Snab, to get anywhere near to um, changing this. Because, I, I mean... I, and, and the other thing that I want to try and explain to people, I think a lot of people perceive it as mutually exclusive, right? So it's one or the other. I don't think that's the case, right? I think you can actually coexist very easily, right? And I think stuff like um, the more low intensity style stuff and, you know, open communities, right? Where anyone can join stuff. It's like very, very easy to get involved. I think stuff like that um, makes it very easy to have both groups of players coexist and actually synergize with themselves um, very, very well, right? Uh, to an extent, right? Uh, and, you know, and try and help people through the content. But, I uh, know, that's... 
it is what it is. Um, I think that is the, the, the core thing, is that it's kind of a battle over who controls the game. Uh, and, like, stuff like Dragon's End and looking at your build, like, I think people view that as a threat to their way of playing the game, pretty much. And they don't want to change how they play oh. the game. One of the reasons I brought all this up was because I think that this might be one of the reasons that people don't like to command in Guild Wars 2. There is a an absence <laughs> of commanders on NA. I feel like it's it's more it's just getting worse. I don't know. It just feels like there's not a lot of commanders for like raids, strikes, etc. They're like emp the LFG is empty a lot of the time. That doesn't mean there's not people that want to do the content. It just means that people have like commander fatigue or something. They don't they don't want to do it. Um, the people that do it are the ones that do it all the time, and there's very few new commanders. Now, there's a big learning curve to this, but I believe that the communication is one of the biggest problems because people don't want to offend anybody. They don't want to take control and and basically call someone out and say, hey, like you said your experience, but you're not really doing this mechanic. What's up? That it puts people in like a really weird situation all the time, right? Where you're going to make enemies. When you're the leader, you're somehow going to piss somebody off, right? So I've just been just been thinking a lot about this. Like, okay, if that's one of the issues why people don't want to command, and I'm sure there are a lot of reasons, but if that is a reason, how do you how do you help those people understand that there are ways that they can take leadership without having to be the jerk in the group? You know, this is the reality. You're gonna have to eat it gonna do it right okay well if you just gonna if you're just gonna be the jerk like i feel like well, no, a lot you don't of people have to be a jerk. Want to no, you, you have to look you j don't be an asshole right okay and you can say like hey listen you know, we, we've got to not touch the oil right and like hey everyone knows what's going on you're not being a jerk when you do that you like the thing is i'm talking about the other end of that um even if you aren't a jerk are you gonna get shit yes even if you're perfectly polite, are people going to say, you're a piece of shit, stop telling me how to play, you're ruining my game? Yes! And the thing is, if you want to shift the culture, then you have to be the trailblazer who's going to tank that. If you can't tank I, it, then I'm sorry, right? It's not going to work. I think that Nico just made a very, very good point. I don't want to fight with people who don't want to play to win, yet alone command them. That is a very interesting point, right? I think a lot of experienced players are like super fatigued because they are willing to do that, but at some point they feel like they're they're battling with people, saying like, "You joined, yeah. you told me that you knew this, you don't know this. Now I am forced to be the bad guy again." Yes, like that kind of that is kind of fatiguing, right? Yes, absolutely. This is exactly what I'm talking about. If you want to change culture, it's incredibly painful, right? You know, trust me, I've been there, done that. You know, I used to be like the ultimate pug lord on EU and I would be every single day raiding, like full clearing nearly every day, the entire groups. It was like perma, you know, I don't want to say the word leech, okay? But it was permanently people who were taking advantage of me. Yes, absolutely. Every single day, people would join and take advantage of me basically not kicking people and um, having a very high tolerance of people not paying attention, not focusing, not caring about the game. Yeah, if we want to change this, Neb, we need an army of people who have absolute neurons and brain cells of steel, okay? And probably a liver of steel from all the drinking that will be, you know, as a result of having, you know, finding some way to cope with it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's the only way. The only way to do it is to have loads of people grinding this and slowly change public perception and public culture. Yeah, of course. So do you think that the low intensity builds do that or do they create another problem? Um, I think that they are, I think they are good for sure. I think that if you can make the game, if you can make builds that, that work everywhere, so you don't have to change your build ever in PVE, that is very good. Particularly if it avoids, ch um, um, if it includes changing specialization, right? So you can play the same build literally everywhere and not change your gear. Yes, that is really good. I think defocusing players from get from okay right 
defocusing players from game mechanics and shifting it to boss mechanics works extremely well. Um, because it's actually, this is, again, I, I always say this, right? It's actually not boss mechanics that players struggle with. It's game mechanics that people struggle with. Um, so for, I think Su Wan is another really good example of this again, actually. Uh, Su Wan, did people know how the fight works? Oh yeah, oh yeah, like, um, almost everyone knew what to do. You know, you gotta, uh, break the bar, you gotta kill the ads, you gotta dodge out of the smash, you gotta kill the tail, you gotta kill the, do the splitty split, right, at, at 80, uh, sorry, at, at 60% and 20%, right, and kill the little mini bosses. They don't know how that fight works, right? But they didn't have the game mechanics, so understanding of movement, boons, right, um, DPS, squads, subgroups, that's where people fall down, so if you can defocus away from game mechanics and shift it to encounter mechanics, all of a sudden, um, I think you have way higher success with people, and moving them away from doing relatively complicated rotations with a lot of buttons in sequence to things that are less, of, you know, less powerful, obviously, because less optimal, but easier to execute is a really good idea, yeah. Uh, I yeah, don't think... I you should do auto attack builds. I actually think this is a misplay. I think what player, and actually um, I did some research on this by the way, uh, big shout out to once again, to the Accessibility Wars community on this uh, because they um, they help with this basically. Um, the difficulty that players have isn't actually doing complicated actions. Um, like we did a poll, like a survey thing and players were okay with that. The issue is doing it quickly, right? Uh, that causes them to have difficulty with kind of keeping track of things. Uh, and it makes the game a lot harder. So as long as you have actions strung together in relatively, you know, a more moderate sequence rather than like a really, really fast high APM sequence, that seems to work out pretty well for people. Uh, and that, you know, helps people play the game uh, without getting overwhelmed by like the actual core game mechanics. So I think reducing builds to lower actions per minute um, versions is the way to go. Keep it, I, I don't think you should completely shy away from complexity. Like we'll see how, well, we'll see if I'm right um, when we do this contest, of course. But my idea is to just try and streamline things down so you aren't pressing as many buttons while still maintaining key roles like healing, applying boons, uh, and also doing DPS. Because if you just do auto attack builds, you're, you're essentially, um, you're essentially moving away from this idea of actually understanding the game and just just pressing one right which actually is a bit of a trap i think i think if you ha if you promote playing pressing one too much you're actually going to end up with a player base that really struggles um to do stuff like um handle these complicated encounters or encounters that require damage because doing dps is heavily reliant on boons particularly if you're auto attacking okay if you're just doing autos your damage is completely contingent on other players um and if we say okay we're just going to make everyone auto attack would that necessarily be bad no but it only works if the other players are kind of carrying you with boons, if that makes yes. any sense, right? This is exactly where I was going yeah. with this. Yeah. And yeah, so just pure autos, I think is, mm -mm. uh-uh, uh-uh. I, I think that is a bit of a dangerous precedent, but I think simplified and streamlined builds are very, very, very good indeed uh, because they can, again, kind of de- uh, de uh, centralize this concept of game mechanics and move it over to encounter mechanics. But you must still um, get players to engage with core game systems. Otherwise, all they're doing is getting hard carried by players who do know the game without the boons and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah there there, there's one bit. My my big issue is that there is one bit of misinformation about the low intensity builds and you just hit the nail on the head, right? You have to have the boons to do this. So if everyone is playing a low intensity build, then no one is going to do the damage that is promised. That's the big exactly, problem. Yeah. And, we, yeah, yeah. and we've already had this problem in Guild Wars 2 where only a handful of people know how to play support builds properly and can generate those boons in a meaningful way. And so everyone else suffers. So I'm conflicted because I like the low intensity builds. I think it helps people... It helps people understand that they can do damage if they just set up their gear and stuff properly or like think about how the stats work and, and whatnot. But there should be a little asterisk that says, hey, this is like the perfect place to start or if you have mobility issues or dexterity issues, like this is perfect. 
But if you do have the capability of working on something that can generate boons with a little bit more complexity, mm -hmm. you should. Because it will make you way more valuable on a team because then uh, you become a net positive with those mm -hmm. boons and can enable everyone else. That's that's my big concern is that this is perfect for open world mm -hmm. um, to an extent. But then once you start getting things like Dragon's End where, you know, the boons are somewhat relevant. Um, not you know, as I showed with the all necro. <laughs> Maybe not as relevant as you would think. Like, you don't need them. But as soon as you start getting into, like, strikes and raids and stuff, more instance content, it is, it's is—it's pretty important. It's pretty important. It absolutely is, yeah. Uh, and it's yeah, great uh, that you can initially get people in, though. Like, somebody that may not have felt they had the opportunity or whatever, I think that low-intensity builds are perfect for getting people into this content. But we shouldn't encourage people to stay there we should be like you did this you can do the next step right I don't know. exactly yeah and that's um yeah I i'm very curious to see what people come up with actually and how well this works because i think this is another good time to mention that we are going to be doing a competition to come up with the best low intensity builds right we're just going to be capping the actions per minute and the amount of burst actions per minute you're allowed uh so basically you can go up to five actions in five seconds is the highest peak actions uh in a time frame and 20 actions per minute so one action every three seconds on average uh i think that and, and by the way that was done in consultation uh once again with accessibility wars the community that, that handles this stuff all the time i'm very curious to see what people come up with um and i think it should work out really well maybe i'm completely wrong and it will be terrible and useless uh but i don't think so actually i think it's gonna work out really well it's gonna be huge it is going to be huge and, and i think nike said this on tea time and he brought up in chat again that there are loads of guides out there and people can find them if they want to and you're you're not wrong um there are lots of guides, but honestly, lots of the guides are, um, they're complicated, actually. Like, a lot of guides, well, there are a lot of build videos, for a start. YouTube guides, I think, is where people really like to find stuff, and those tend to not exist, actually. Um, which I think is a, it's a huge oversight on our end. I think this is a massive problem. Like, a rotation video is worthless, um, to most people, because you need to kind of know what all the traits do and what all the buttons do in order to, um, you know, to understand, like, say, a, uh, uh, a rotation video that's no good to you really it will just teach you to press the buttons in the right order it won't tell you how that build actually works that's no good it needs to be at a much kind of deeper level um is what needs to be explained to players i also think that in general all of these communities aren't that forward facing um even sc isn't that forward facing not it's not really their fault right it's not there it's not on them to like spread their community far and wide right they're busy people but ultimately um i think this needs to be way more in the game and you know that could be from Aina as well like making guild advertisement services way better we could be advertising way better to get people up there um better websites right better discord servers right better communities look i always make this example um world of warcraft classic this is a very easy game where you press maybe four buttons in your rotation tops the community for just warrior just warrior nothing else only warrior um compared to all the other classes is is like three times bigger than the biggest guild wars 2 community discord right this is the kind of thing that we don't have in guild wars 2 that needs to exist if player if we want to kind of help players understand the game is like these really big again forward facing communities they just don't exist in guild wars 2 if we can make them exist and i think it works out way better um and yeah sure people who really want to learn do get the information and they can absolutely find the information i think nike is correct here but you want to make sure that there are as few steps and as few barriers to doing this i think this is something that um i think you know about this snap actually about how players you know like if there are barriers in the way people are just not going to do it right i think we talked about this a little bit before and it's on us as the community to make sure that the amount of barriers um between a player and knowledge are minimal as the absolute minimum right you know what's cool that uh, what i've actually studied this mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's a, a theory called the theory of planned behavior now before everyone goes after me it's not perfect there are flaws but it suggests that there are three things that lead to intention that then lead to behavior. They're mm -hmm. attitude, subjective norms, and perceived behavioral control or like actual behavior control as well. 
So if people think that they can't do it, they're less likely to intend to do something and then less likely to actually do it. And if there are actual barriers in the way, like for example, if you're trying to go donate blood or something, but the nearest clinic is a 45 minute bus ride and you can't afford a ticket, there's no way you're going, right? There's just like huge barriers in the way. So you're absolutely right. If there are ways that you can help shift attitudes, um, shift the culture, essentially, like the norms, and remove barriers, then people are way more likely to do the thing. Way more likely. Which, uh, yeah, is a, is a good thing. We need, we need to make a shift. Indeed. We must make a shift.